Hi guys, today we're building a game called, well, which I call Inverse Grid. I don't actually know what it's called. Uh, and if you do, please let me know. I can update the title then. So this is usually a mini game in other games and it goes more or less like this. So you have a grid, each cell can have two colors. It starts with all the cells being one color. And your task is to go from one color to the other color. So all cells need to end up uh, in a different color. Um, let's go with pain, I guess. Set preferred size. I actually don't know. Uh, let's go with static final and um, num cells, num grid cells, or actually grid size in cells. Let's start with three. That size is 60. In which case, that thing is that multiplied by that. So, I guess we need some kind of cell concept. It needs to have, yeah, uh, I think I forgot to mention that a cell, when clicked, it changes its color and it also changes the color of all adjacent cells. And that's the whole point of the game to, um, to make it more interesting. So we can flip the cell. And what do we do with X and Y? Well, we can do this cell size our background is going to be rectangle and get children add rectangle and then that rectangle is going to define our color. So we need to know if this is flipped or not. So is flipped by default false. Flip, we are going to change is flipped to not flipped. And based on the flippedness, we're going to change the color of this thing. promote that to an instance level variable and then we can do something like this is flipped color blue else color green that's done that's done um now yeah, let's create this so grid size and cells for x grid that create new cell uh, x and y and grid of children add cell so how is it looking Uh, that is that is tiny. Yeah, let's make it hundred or something. Also, we probably want to add stroke. Otherwise, we can't really see those cells. Also, by default, it should be green, ideally.
Yeah, cool. So I need to be able to click on them and they flip itself and all adjacent cells. And adjacent in sort of, um, so if I click the middle one, that's left, right, top, and down. Well, the flare is going to be super easy because it's just set on mouse click, right? Mouse click. Ooh, how are, going, how are we going to obtain the adjacent ones? Okay, let's take this out and do it here because here we've got the access to the other ones. Set on uh, mouse clicked. So we've got X and Y and we need its adjacent ones. So first of all, let's do this. And then we need to obtain its neighbors. Mm, I need point. Actually, I need integer point. AWT has got integer point, right? That huh? Okay, so that takes int x and y. Is that oh, you've got to be kidding me. Uh, final int final x x. Final and final y y. Now it's got to be happy with this, right? Right. So we don't need this thing. And we probably just want this thing. Poor AWT. Like it's got an entire windowing toolkit. I use it just literally for a single data structure of an integer point, because JavaFX doesn't have integer points. Oh, the irony. Cool. So, what I want now is a list of those points. Uh, it's raised as list, and then we can get so I don't need this point, but I need its adjacent ones. So it's plus one, minus one, plus one, minus one. So I got the points of where these things are. Now I need points to be valid. So it's points stream filter p is valid. Yeah, let's create a new new method. Uh, create a method. So p is valid if p x is greater or equal to zero and p x is less than grid size and cells right and p y is greater or equal to zero and p y is less than that thing so under these four conditions then the point is valid so we filter them to obtain all the valid points which means we can then map them to cells. How do we get? We get them from the root, right? Yeah, so it's map each point to root, get children, uh, stream, find any that match my filter and the filter is node 
no, actually we're going to map them from nodes to cells because I know the only thing in that pane is cells. So that is safe. And then filter. It's N, sorry, it's C and then C, X. Are we storing X, Y? No, we should. equals px right so I need to really extract this and then call it to uh, call it something like get cell given x and y it's much nicer It should be safe to call, right? Because you know it's it's a grid, so it's a square grid, so it should contain that. Get cell px py. Awesome. So I've got the cells that I need. I just need to flip them uh, for each cell. Flip. There we go. Let's try that. Nice. Yep, it does what it's supposed to do. And we can get to this point. Um, I wonder if I want to use slightly different colors um, in case some of the viewers are colorblind. In which case, well, we do it the easy way. We're going to add a symbol to differentiate. New text code zero uh, add all background and then symbol because it's stack pane is going to be centered automatically so I don't need to do anything else. Uh, I'll just increase the font though to thirty and then yeah we did we need to do something else uh, here so set text is flipped then one else. Zero. How about that? Okay, so with three, um, three by three grid, it's not that difficult, it seems. I was just clicking randomly, really. And we also need to tell the user whether they won the game or not. I guess when you flipped it, so somewhere here, once you flipped everything else, you could do a check. Uh, I'm going to leave this to you. That shouldn't be too difficult. So you essentially go through all the cells in the root and then check that they're flipped and you can get the flipped flag from here. Check all are flipped. If so, player wins. Let's do one of four. So at this point, I think the tutorial is pretty much done. I don't think we're going to add anything else in here. I'm just going to try and figure this out with four and see if we can win this. I wonder what the strategy is here got to be a way to systematically solve these. My current strategy is to isolate these things into the corner so I can 
so it's easier. There we go, got it. Nice. Uh, so yeah, in this tutorial we've built a game that I don't have a precise title of. I'm just call it inverse grid because it's a grid, and then you click on these things and they get an inverse of what they were before. Uh, but apart from that, the stuff that we used is pretty much the same that we always use. Something like stack pane that allows you to position uh, nodes within uh, the parent of JavaFX in a sort of centered stacked way. Uh, we've used a bit of functional programming here to get all the cells, which is always nice. Functional programming is nice when you're dealing with a bunch of things. So if you're using collections, then um, functional programming is the way to go. So if I put this here, I don't need that one. Then, and there's probably a way to just get stream immediately. Uh, stream all. There we go. Nice. There's a bit of weirdness going on with indentation. It's not something I. But you know, is it more readable? You tell me, I guess. And on that note, thanks for watching and don't forget to vote on uh, future videos.